It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Great panel ready for you. Lori Gill, Jim Dalrymple, Andy Anako. We, of course, are going to review all the announcements Apple made yesterday. Apple News Plus, Apple Arcade, Apple Card, and Apple TV Plus. Our thoughts, our reactions, our review next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 654, recorded Tuesday, March 26th, 2019. Sick Burn Pop Socket. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh shops, plans, and delivers step by step recipes and pre measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. For $80 off your first month, go to HelloFresh.com slash MacBreak80 and use the code MacBreak80. And by Atlassian. Atlassian software powers the full spectrum of collaboration between IT teams and the rest of your organization. Visit Atlassian.com slash IT to see what IT can be by giving their products a try for free. And by Sophos Cybersecurity. In an age of evolving cyber threats, you need evolved cybersecurity. Powered by artificial intelligence, Sophos can detect threats before they strike, killing ransomware, viruses, and other cyber threats dead in their tracks. Get a free security scan or a free trial today at Sophos.com. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. And there is news from Apple. Renee Ritchie is still in uh, Cupertino, where he's <laughs> desperately trying to meet Oprah. But uh, in his place, Lori Gill, we love having Lori on. Uh, managing editor at iMore. Now you were at the event, right? I yes. Last time we spoke, I had not been invited yet, and I think the very next day I got my my official invite. So yeah, I, that was my first uh, invite to an Ooh, Apple event. So it was fancy, a big deal for me. Schmancy, yeah. aren't we fancy? <laughs> I get to hobnob with all the celebrities. <laughs> also at the <laughs> event, I think Mr. Jim Dalrymple of the Loop LoopInsight dot com. Hi, Jim. Did you meet Jennifer Garner? I. Did not. I didn't even know she I was, was there. But I was surprised that she didn't text me. I'll, I'll yeah. be honest. Shocking. I mean, she she had the chance, but uh, she didn't. So, but I I did get to uh, hang out with Lori. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Frankly, we give me right give me the choice. The I'm hanging out with Gil. <laughs> much yes. there, there much go. better than Garner. <laughs> I'm much that louder. Was, that than was her. my that was my choice too. I think you you made the right choice, Jim. Also with yeah. us. Andy Anako, who was busy back in Boston. He's with, of course, the uh, Boston Public Radio, WGBH in Boston. Hello. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. I, I was uh, I, I was holding the fort uh, here on the East Coast. I felt as though <laughs> we I needed to represent East Coast snobbery in shunning <laughs> this Hollywood, California lifestyle sort of event. Somebody had to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and, of course, we were here um, busy getting Apple's takedown notices uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, doing our usual uh, commentary on it, Megan Maroney and I. I don't want to <clears throat> color your perception of the event, so I won't say anything. But uh, let's go one by one through the announcements, shall we? Mm. Uh, at the very beginning, the very first thing uh, Apple announced was actually the only thing you can get right now, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Apple's new news, News Plus. And in order to get it, by the way, you have to update iOS or macOS to the latest uh, version. They pushed out uh, updates. I, I kept trying to download an app or update the app. And it, no, you got to update the whole operating system. Why is that, by the way? Does anybody know? I would imagine that there were a lot of, a lot of things tied to uh, uh, Apple News and the way it works. Or you know, there were deep, other updates that Apple wanted to get out. And Yeah, I'm... They're always testing and they're always releasing updates. So seems like this though, was I mean, a good opportunity for them to just put that out there. Really, the big mm. the big uh, change to uh, Apple News was the addition of Texture, which was the magazine subscription app Apple bought last year. They were a sponsor. Texture will be shutting down. They haven't shut down yet, but uh, they will be shutting. I don't think you can pay them money now if you wanted to. Apple will charge ten dollars for a almost identical service. Uh, Apple claimed three hundred magazines. Texture said two hundred, but I looked at the list of magazines and just off the top of my head, couldn't see any uh, differences. And it is very similar 
to the way texture worked. In fact, people like Stephen Trout and Smith, who've looked under the hood, say it's almost identical. For instance, yeah. the way texture worked was uh, each magazine was a PDF of the entire magazine. And uh, at first I thought, especially because Apple showed off things like moving covers, video covers, and a new uh, table of contents uh, interface, I thought, oh, maybe Apple, wouldn't this be great if Apple said, look, we can do a better job of magazine layout for you. Why don't you use our templates and our software and add it to your workflow? I thought, oh, I had this whole fantasy. And it turns out, no, it's exactly, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Uh, now, I like Texture. I paid for it. Uh, and uh, Texture had a kind of unwritten additional feature, which was one subscription, multiple devices. So everybody in my family had Texture on their iPad or iPhone. Apple's going to make that explicit and say this is a family shareable uh, app, which is great. So you pay one ten dollars subscription, and my wife can use it, and so forth. Everybody in my family. Yeah. There's also a, I've, uh, so, uh, someone, someone on Twitter, Steve Troughton Smith, uh, pointed out that uh, I'm reading. I'm reading for the tweeter. I'm sorry, I didn't give you the link. Apple News Plus magazines doesn't seem to use Fair Play, their DRM, and preloads the first few pages of PDF-based issues, regardless of whether you have a subscription. Thus, you can just rip them out of the cache on macOS and reconstitute the original PDF. And he then goes to show that, yes, he managed to, without a subscription, just simply create an entire PDF of the latest National Geographic. You so, get the whole thing, not just the first few pages. You get the whole thing. Yeah, well, yeah you can, it's it's not doing it the honest way, but yeah, it's yeah, that, that's well, not uncommon. I think um, magazine companies have had a hard time figuring out how to keep people from hacking and getting their PDFs because they're they've that, that's very it's very common that somebody can kind of just steal the PDF version of it basically and upload it for everybody to use. And that's kind of this backdoor way of getting access to it. Yeah, and there's there was also a problem this morning. I don't know if they, they solved it yet, where a lot of people were get were getting the uh, news app news app crashing because of uh, the server was sending the sending bad data, uh, causing like oh. <laughs> causing like actual like really really bad huge crashes. I think they might have fixed it by <laughs> now, but as of as of like nine or ten a.m., I was getting nothing but screenshots of of uh, of essentially crash <laughs> reports of, of people. Do you, anybody know what this means? <laughs> this is, <laughs> So just so people understand, because Apple didn't make this completely clear. Uh, yes, you have to get an iOS update to 12.2 to get it. And then when I'm looking at news and saying, well, I see stuff. I uh, This looks exactly like my old Apple news. There is one more edition here, News Plus, and that's the actual magazine newsstand. So you have to go to News Plus and then you'll see the magazines. It didn't seem to pick up any of my texture stuff you start from scratch there are some new uh, digital only things like the cut a tech crunch subscription version um, but essentially it's very much you know when you look at a magazine uh, very much the same uh, i like this you know kind of uh, curation and of course one of the reasons magazines will like this is getting featured in this curated area is going to clearly help wall street journal is a part of it but not the full wall street journal apparently you, mm -hmm. I, I i subscribe so i can't tell i get but it's $149 a year. I get a digital Wall Street Journal. If you use the $10 a month subscription or a week, no, a month subscription from uh, Apple, you'll only get a select portion of the content. And no New York Times, no Washington Post, but there is the LA Times. And I think an interesting play from a newspaper that's been trying to fight its local image and become a national newspaper. Well, that's one way to do it. If you're competing against the New York Times and the um, Washington Post. That's a chance yeah. to get, you know. It's weird. There was a there was a, a memo uh, that uh, the I think the CEO of the, of the uh, Wall Street Journal uh, circulated uh, to uh, to employees to the company uh, over the weekend, basically outlining that clarifying that no, not for, we're not giving away the entire Wall Street Journal for ten bucks a month. It's going to be a selection of stuff, yeah. but also kind of explaining why they decided to cut this deal mm -hmm. where the New York Times and other publications didn't. It's basically saying that not basically not the he doesn't they don't feel as a company as though this is a product that is going to go to people who are likely to want to pay for the wall street journal anyway this okay. is 
Exactly. Well, the, well, mostly mm. these are people that to get fresh eyes on the Wall Street Journal, uh, and so that maybe and uh, these are people that aren't contribute that aren't get, they aren't making any money off of anyway, and maybe this way they can convert these people into paying Wall Street Journal users, particularly when, uh, for instance, they, they there's something they want to see in the Wall Street Journal archives, or they want to see business analysis that they seem to be holding back as part of uh, the paid package. So we're seeing a we're seeing a lot of plans uh, to. Like try to introduce a publication to people who are, aren't going to see it otherwise and maybe pull them into the website where they can then go and become like a full bore subscriber. So I, uh, I subscribe to the New Yorker app. The experience in the New Yorker app is, is very different uh, if you compare that to this experience of the New Yorker on, uh, on Apple's uh, News Plus. Um, You'll get the same New Yorker typeface, which is nice. If you open the magazine, you get a cover. This is that new Apple interface where you kind of get a table of contents. But when you want to read it, you, you if you, oh, maybe you don't swipe it. <laughs> okay, you have to tap it. You, tap on, Okay, yeah. so it is actually, New Yorker has done something different than other magazines. They actually look like they've done something a little fancier. Most other magazines uh, was very much like texture where you would uh, swipe over and then you get basically a PDF scan of the magazine, including uh, ads. So other magazines. Yeah, each of them, that. each one is different, or, or some of them are different. That's how it that, was on texture. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad yeah. the, to see the New Yorkers put a little more energy into uh, the digital version on here. Yeah. Um, didn't uh, didn't they mention either yesterday or sometime that uh, f uh, for certain for certain screen combinations like the iPhone they will actually break if they if they have access to the actual text of the PDF they will break up the t the PDF and make it more readable for phones so you don't have to you know pinch and zoom uh, on this tiny little iPhone SE screen. Good. I hope they do because that that is a big issue, of course. Uh, oh, well, let me just show you real. I, I don't know if this is going to look bad on my screen. Um, this on my iPhone is a uh, retro gamer. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's the tiny little. It's page by page. And it, <laughs> yeah. tap, tap a page and open it up. Let's see. Do you do you have to kind of move around within it uh, to read Sorry it? About the, it's a little bright. Go. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. So you can yeah, pinch it. You zoom. have to pinch it. Yeah. Yeah. So some of them are still like that. The, Apple, they just, when they demonstrated it, uh, uh, they demonstrated it on an iPhone and iPad. But I was surprised when they demonstrated it on the iPad, they did it in portrait mode. Uh, but I guess that actually now that I've used mm -hmm. it for a while, makes more sense. Because if you're doing it in, in uh, landscape mode, you get this permanent, uh, well, not permanent, but you get a gutter on here. Whereas if you yeah. do it in portrait mode, it just kind of, you see, more, it's a more natural experience. And the gutter is a floating, a floating gutter that goes away when you're reading. Uh, and you know, we'll, again, we'll, this depends on the production of the magazine, because uh, some magazines you can tap the image and zoom, and some magazines mm -hmm. there's no zooming uh, at all. So obviously, it's still up to the publisher to decide how they want it. You can't zoom the text here on this uh, New Yorker. Uh, magazine. You know when I when I thought about uh, Apple News Plus yesterday and the magazines, one of the the first things that I thought of was I actually stopped reading magazines years ago. Uh, and and get more detailed news um, through RSS feeds. And I like what Apple News does. You know, you have different sections and there's content from a lot of different publishers. But actually, and I, I wrote that yesterday and I get I get a lot of news and and you know tidbits and things like that from podcasts that I, I like to uh, listen to. But when I subscribe to, to Apple News Plus and you go through that front page, it's it's actually uh, quite nice because you do get stories from a lot of different publications. Yes. So you can read, you know, more in-depth uh, magazine stories uh, from these publications based on um a, a topic you know whatever they they put in there for you whether it's sports or cars or be careful though um, 
because, uh, for instance, I don't read People magazine, never would, have no interest in the content. But because in demoing this yesterday, I opened an article on People magazine, <laughs> it is now in my For You section. Elizabeth Hasselbeck takes all, tells all about her time on The View. I never watched The View. I don't, care. I don't even know who Elizabeth Hasselbeck is, and I certainly don't want to read that article. But it is front and center. It's like the <laughs> top article in For You. And I only open People once. So I think yeah. there's a way that's to block that, though, isn't there? Well, don't I think once you open it, you can unheart it. I don't know. I think, uh, actually, um, I think it's just because you are uh, subscribed to News Plus right now, because I literally didn't open a People magazine. And you're getting it, too? And I, yeah, it, I, and I have it. People oh. front and center, and I have Variety. Um, well, I don't, want, variety I don't mind Fair Variety. but Populated uh, he heavily in there, too. Yeah. And these are both magazines that, so far, I haven't opened yet. So I think they're just, it's just spotlighting me. But it's information. Not so this isn't for you. <laughs> this is for everybody. Uh, okay. And because it knows I subscribe to the Wall Street Journal, though, it's giving me a good selection of Wall Street Journal stuff. NFL football, it must, you know, I've selected these because of, you know, years of use of Apple News. So a lot of this comes from uh, my previous use of Apple News. Yeah. It would well, be very pretty would... interesting. I, I subscribed to Apple News uh, this morning and I just got a, an alert that your Apple News subscription has expired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's some growing pains. <laughs> yeah. In fact, there's a... Some people who, in addition to the crash, which as far as I know has fixed, uh, it was it was like a, a server update that they did. They didn't have to push out a yep. operating system update. But um, <clears throat> some people have been complaining or commenting on the fact that they haven't been able to get family sharing to update. And I think it's just a matter of just wait. Um, a couple people that um, downloaded it yesterday at iMore had the same situation where their family sharing devices weren't they, it just wasn't showing it. And it's supposed to just happen automatically. You literally open your news app, whether you had any anything to do with the, the the lead family member subscribing or not, you just open it up and there you have it. And um, some of uh, some people, they, it just wasn't showing up at all. And they would <clears throat> uh, delete the app and reinstall it, restart their devices, do all the normal things that you would do, made sure that they, had, I, they were signed in with the right Apple ID, all that kind of stuff. And it just never worked. And then just suddenly it worked. So I think in some circumstances, just wait. Um, it'll update, hopefully. <laughs> I uh, there's some. I mean, and now we're nitpicking, but the sharing feature leaves a little bit to be desired. And I, I wasn't sure what would happen, but if I share a story from Apple News, uh, if somebody has Apple News, they'll get that story. But if they don't, they'll get a link that promotes Apple News. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of an issue for me because. Honestly, mostly what I want to do when I'm perusing news is bookmark it for use on our shows. So I can't yeah. really use this for that. That's that's my problem too. I really I, I hope that particularly when you go from a, we, a a web article or something that's available, let's say on the LA Times, but also on the website, if you want to share it with somebody who is not on Apple News, I hope that they allow you to give you give them a, a link that tell, that takes them to the web version of that. Um, it's it's a copy. It's um uh, it's better than I thought it would be. Uh, I think they presented it exactly the way that uh, they should have presented it, which is not as we are creating a revolution in news and distribution. Here we've got we've created a five minute video explaining our vision, but more like yes, we bought this app and we've rebranded it, and now we've enhanced it because we have the ability to make deals with larger publications. We're bringing in these these other great publications you're gonna, you're going to want to be a part of. Um, it still remains to be seen whether this is a really great platform for people uh, for publications that are trying to have one foot in print publishing and one foot in the web or uh, uh, publications that uh, are doing in saturation local coverage but they want to have uh, they want to be able to project their content into the screens of their local readers but also to make it available to people who are looking for news about the region if they don't live in that certain region um, it's a it's a sticking point we're going to find out uh, how much data Apple is willing to share with these publications because uh, it's it is a privacy issue then it, it is a feature of the system that Apple is not going Apple is uh, unlike the unlike a website it's not going to be collecting data it's not going to be lo loading up the cookies it's not going to be tracking you from place to place to place on the other hand particularly when you have a local publication a local news publication they need to have that relationship that's more direct and more kind of intimate with their readers so that they know 
uh, who are they reaching? What areas of the region are they reaching? Uh, what topics are getting the are getting the most views? Which uh, do they need to hire more local political reporters? Do they need to hire more local sports reporters? That sort of thing. And once you ba if you if Apple decides to uh, drop that iron curtain so that they'll get some kind of money for some kind of views, but they will never know who's reading this stuff, what's popular, and what they need to keep focusing on. That's not a great deal for a local news uh, news site. And notice there are no, aside from the LA Times, there are no local. There's no yeah. newspapers on here at all. By the way, I found now, it took me a little fiddling around. If I don't want People Magazine, whatever I go, <laughs> I go to the share sheet, and and then they've added some items to share. Love story, dislike story, block channel. So that's actually now, it used to be a control on the uh, page but now it's actually in the share sheet so just in case in case you want to block people i am now blocking you, people no you, no you can also add uh content from that share sheet um add um, a bookmark to safari nice yeah so that's the thing that kind of bugs me about this and by the way i, I will subscribe i subscribe to texture i really like Having, I mean, it's perfect for an iPad. It's all that content on an iPad. Great for travel. You, you know, you it does have offline use, as they pointed out. It will automatically download magazines that you're interested in. Uh, but it also, and I, I worry when I see TechCrunch and the Cut and Skim on there, it is Apple's walled garden alternative to an open web. Yeah. And uh, and honestly, that scares me a little bit. Uh, I hate in what way? Uh, but it scares you because you want to be able to read all those horrible things on the internet. No, <laughs> I, I, I think the internet, yeah, well, the kind, open yeah, internet, is of. one of the best things mankind has ever done. In a closed wall garden, brought to you by a single company that charges you for that content, is not a desirable alternative. Yeah, but you don't, you don't need to subscribe to it. This is for people who no, no, but they, who, but at, in who, time, who this that. might replace it. That's my fear. Just as Facebook is starting to replace likely. the internet for a lot of people. We're, Andy, this is the trend. This is well, what's happening. Not apps as like not, this, not as content aggregation in a walled garden and things like Facebook are totally <laughs> replacing the open internet. I, um, I agree that, that that's <clears throat> the way that's working, but so is literally using the internet. If you're just doing a general Google search, it's it's aggregating information based on your personal tastes. Yeah, and but the then you go to a web page. Then you're going to which you can blog. still do. Which well, you can, you can do. do it is uh, because it hasn't gone away entirely yet, but it's slowly being replaced. And there are a lot of people but, who don't leave Facebook. It's like AOL. But, but Leo, I I think that that uh, the people that don't leave Facebook and the people that Apple is trying to get for these uh, magazine subscriptions may, may be a bit different. Uh, and there's no reason that you can't go out and purchase subscriptions to these magazines and go to their website individually if you want. It'll cost you a lot more than ten dollars a month, but you can do that. Apple is putting together a package here where uh, people that that want these types of of subscriptions to be able to get them easily and all in one place. And like I said earlier about the Apple uh, News Plus homepage, that to me is the most compelling part of of the whole subscription, which I didn't really notice yesterday. But after I subscribed and I saw that homepage, I, I was impressed with that because it didn't tie me into, okay, here are 300 magazines. What is it that I want to read today? You know, um, it, it was more of here are some interesting stories from the 300 magazines that we have. I love that approach. That's what I really like. I, I don't so, deny it's superior to an individual app for each magazine, which is also contrary to an open web where you can use a browser and surf around and you can use it on a variety of devices. And honestly, I, I think this undermines that completely. And how many times you go to a website now on a mobile device that says, you know, the experience would be much better on our app, including Reddit. Uh, I, I think that that's a, that is a very malign in, uh, tendency. It, it really depends on your point of view, and it really depends, uh, as as Jim was saying, as uh, on what kind of user is using this sort of thing and how they intend to use it. Uh, Reddit, even on the web, is kind of one of those aggregators that you talk about. When I uh, part of my morning hunt is uh, as when I when I open up my my laptop and see what fresh hell awaits me uh, after eight hours of sleep. 
Uh, I one of the places I go is I go to Twitter, I go to uh, I go to uh, Reddit, I go to a couple other a uh, couple message boards, and usually there's a list of like links that people have set up just to create a comment on, uh, and that's where I find out about oh well here's here's a here's a here's a uh, a bug in Apple News that I had not encountered myself this morning or hadn't had someone scream at me about a half hour after waking up, so there every piece of news is probably going to come in some sort of a box uh, aggregated with other content. The, the question is, is this Apple News app doing a good enough job of human creation? And that's one of the great advantages of Apple News versus the algorithmic approach of Google News is that there are human beings. They're actual there. They're, we have we have lots and lots of friends who are no longer in journalism because they are working inside <laughs> Apple now doing essentially their old jobs, but with much, much, much better health care plans. Uh, and they're they're selecting they're selecting and promoting and curating uh, content that will be front and center for all of these people. Now, I, 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 your point I don't is think that's a good well thing met. either. We don't want Apple to choose. Well, I mean, if Jim's well, content well, we, to have some, Apple choose people, all the stories people, he sees, that's fine. But that's not a. I don't think that's a good way to think about what's some, going on in people, the world. Some people do. I don't think that's. I don't think that's a good idea. That's not the way that I want to get my news. Uh, but however, for some people, that's the best user interface there is. Um, the hope is that uh, not only will this surface really, really obscure magazines that really don't have the resources to create a compelling web uh, web uh, uh, web presentation that will work on mobile devices as well as on desktops and well as on tablets but also uh, it will surface individual pieces from uh, other publications they never heard about and maybe they will want to so long as Apple doesn't really do put any roadblocks towards someone leaving the Apple news walled garden and going straight to the Wall Street Journal or going straight to the LA Times or going straight to BMX Biker Magazine's uh, website. Uh, that's okay. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of choice. But I agree with you that there is a danger if enough people fall for the snake oil that no 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 believe me we're we've got your interests at heart writers and creators and publishers we're creating the <laughs> best environment to present your content well no you're providing another avenue for their content and so long as you don't accept a really bad deal from apple which is probably what they're likely to offer you you'll be okay so long as you don't put all your rigs in this one basket. if i'm reading a wired article <clears throat> on uh, apple's news plus can i then go to uh, is there any way to use <clears throat> Apple News Plus to open that article in Safari? Oh, you know, that was one thing that we were asking about, and I hadn't even tried that yet. There's Let's not. find out. I could tell you. Oh. The only way to do it is to, you can add it to the Safari reading list, but I don't know if that just puts And then the, it goes back to Apple News Plus. Yeah. So, uh, Leo, so it I is, just, I, so I'm just saying the arguments you guys give are the same arguments people give. I love living in a gated community. It's safe. It's fine. And, and there are a lot of positive arguments for that. But ultimately, it's it's deleterious to the ecosystem, in my opinion. Go ahead. Okay, Leo, I have to, to uh, back you up here for just a sec. You said that I am content to allow Apple editors to, to pick out articles for me. That's not necessarily true. What I'm saying is that with a catalog of 300 uh, magazines, the fact that Apple would pick out articles that may be a starting point for me is good. Now, this morning, I did go into National Geographic uh, magazine and took a look through there as I was uh, scanning through some. There are a lot of stories, a lot of great journalism in magazines that I would never see if Apple didn't do that page. So I'm, I'm, I am happy that Apple uh, is pulling out some of this content and saying, "Hey, here's something you might be interested in. This is a story about, yeah, you know, Eric Clapton, but it's in this magazine that, um, you, you know, you may not read. So if I go in there and then I go down a rabbit hole of reading different articles from this magazine, that's good for me as a reader." It's good for the magazine because it's it's giving them some exposure. I may highlight that article on on Twitter or, or on the website. It's it's a it's a starting point for people, and I think that f even for me, with the with the amount of time I have in a day, which you know oftentimes isn't much. Here's here's 300 magazines. Go through them. I just I don't have time for that. Here are some stories from 300 magazines that we think you'll find interesting. Great. There's a good starting point for me, and off I go. So I think that they're presenting it in a way that is going to give people uh, a place to start, and and 
there's no reason that you can't deep dive from there. You know, I mean, I, I'm not I I have RSS feeds for for news sites and for for sites that I I really like to read and authors that I really like to read. I, you know, Apple News, uh, the regular. Uh, free Apple News is still a place I go every day, multiple times a day, and look at what's new in there. And now Apple News Plus. I mean, that's it's it's more in depth journalism, and I really like that. And if they can pull out some some articles for me, then I'm okay with that. But I'm not going to rely on that. It's also something to consider when you think about the financial situation that some people are in that they can't afford all of these subscriptions, or maybe even one or two of these subscriptions. And for the $10 a month price, you and your family can read National Geographic, but can also read the National Review and the New Yorker. And so for people whose finances aren't really um, as high as they want it to be, their family gets access to a lot of sort of high high concept and 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 really educational articles that they maybe couldn't have afforded before. And I think that's a really that's a that's a leveling of the playing field for a lot of people who mm. might have wanted to be able to read the New Yorker, but literally couldn't afford to because that one that's a weekly. So that one's I, I can't remember, but it's pretty pricey per month. I used to have a subscription to it and it was a little bit too pricey for me at the time. And now for ten dollars a month, I can read the New Yorker and I can read all these other magazines. So, yeah, and I don't deny that. In fact, as I said, I subscribed to Texture for years and I will subscribe to this. Uh, I do like it. I, I value it. I just worry about the walled garden aspect yep. of it. We're going to take a break and come back. There's lots more to talk about. I, don't, I mean, that's News Plus. That's the only thing Apple announced <laughs> yesterday that you can get today. Uh, but there is a lot more in the announcement, including Jennifer Garner. So we're going to get... <laughs> How is it that she was there? There were a lot of people, like Chris Evans, who were there. At least we saw him on the Apple feed. But... Look at all the people uh, who were there who didn't show up. Where were they? Backstage for at a party? She was probably looking for me. Oh, that's it. Of course. <laughs> you know, she was. She's saying, "I heard Dalrymple's here. Where? Yeah. Where is he? I need a then new battery saw... in my mic pack. Where's the sound guy? Oh, that must be him." <laughs> <laughs> but then she saw that he was sitting next to me and was like, "Ooh, she's too cool. I guess I'm just." Gonna... Oh, I can't compete with that, Gill. Oh man, <laughs> damn it! Once again, <sighs> first she. Uh, First she steals what's his name and now this. It's terrible. <laughs> Who's the good looking guy? I can't remember. Uh, that, that would be me. Oh, yeah, that's it. Our <laughs> show today brought to you by my dinner. I love HelloFresh. We've been cooking HelloFresh for a while now. Melty Monterey Jack burgers with red onion, jam, garlic, mayo, and crispy breaded zucchini. Tuscan sausage and pepper spaghetti. Creamy dill chicken with roast potatoes and asparagus. You know, the thing about HelloFresh is you're going to get, you don't have to do the meal planning. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to buy the ingredients. They do the meal sh planning, the shopping. They even do the prepping. It's like a sous chef that arrives at your door and then you've got this amazing meal ready for you to whip up in 30 minutes or less. And it is delicious. I appreciate it too because as some of you know, I'm on a keto diet, so I can take those HelloFresh meals and modify them so that Michael and Lisa, who aren't, can have a luscious meal, and I can modify the sauces or uh, or the or some of the things so I can have my keto meal. It's really fantastic. All meals come together in 30 minutes max and use less than two pots and pans. And I, I appreciate HelloFresh's attention to that because I'm the pot scrubber too. And cleanup is minimal. You'll make family dinners fuss-free with HelloFresh's Picky Eater kid-tested and approved family plans. They have a number of different plans. There's a veggie plan, a classic plan, and a family plan. I like the family plan because Michael is very picky, but he always loves those HelloFresh meals, especially the Melty Monterey Jack burgers. Oh, I just leave the garlic mayo off for him and put it on for me. Mm, that's more for me. It, but fun fe features, too. There's a dinner to lunch. Did you see that one? where there's enough for your dinner and your lunch. I love that. 20-minute meals if you're in a hurry. Gourmet meals if you're a gourmet. And, of course, uh, one-pot wonders, which I think, you know, a lot of these I'm going to cook again and again and again. That's the other thing. With HelloFresh, you're learning new meals, new ideas. You're really expanding what, uh, what your repertoire includes. And I love the way the HelloFresh meals and recipe information get, 
get packaged. Clear nutritional information. And they come in brown paper bags, so everything you need is in that one bag, which is really nice. And by the way, those meal kits fit perfectly in the fridge, so I don't have to go looking for ingredients. I just pop them in the fridge. It's also fun for us because we get the HelloFresh box, and some weeks we distribute just as a benefit to our staff. We distribute them, and they just pull out the bag. They've got exactly what they want. I have to say, though, these guys, you got. <laughs> You guys are rapacious. The staff jumps on this HelloFresh box. Our our box came yesterday. Uh, Lisa had already gone home, so she called in to say, uh, hey, bring that box uh, to home to us. It was already gone. I hope you enjoy that box. John, I'm looking at you. HelloFresh. Here's the deal. Make deliciousness part of your week. Get out of that recipe rut and start cooking outside of your comfort zone. We're going to have to start ordering two boxes a week. By discovering new delicious recipes from HelloFresh. And you're going to love this. $80 off your first month. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MacBreak80. The offer code here is MacBreak80, all one word. That's $20 off your first four boxes. HelloFresh.com. That's a great offer. HelloFresh.com slash MacBreak80. And don't forget that offer code, MacBreak80, for $20 off your first four boxes. $80 total. Hello, Fresh. <laughs> it's John. It's our new guy, John Ashley. He just like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> oh, I like working here. <laughs> I got the Hello Fresh. He comes, puts it under his arm, goes running out the door. Mm. All right. By the way, uh, I loved this picture that they showed, the Vanity Fair style picture of all the uh, Apple TV Plus uh, creators. With Oprah front and center, and there's <laughs> there's Jennifer Garner, by the way. You see right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's talk about after they announced uh, News Plus, they moved on to the credit card. Right? Is that the next thing? I think it was. And uh, we're starting to learn a little bit more about the Apple Card. It makes a lot of sense. It's something we knew that Apple or thought Apple was going to do. They had we had heard partnered with Goldman Sachs to make this card um, for a long time. Uh, Alex Lindsay on the show has been saying Apple should get into financial services, banking even. The Apple card is, an, is a good first step. Um, it isn't, it, well, it is a card, but really that's not the chief way you'll use it. You'll use it uh, with your Apple Watch or your iPhone. The card interest rate, uh, now that we're seeing the fine print, they said it's going to be low, but they didn't say what it was. They also said it won't be available till later this summer. Uh, we now know that the interest rate varies somewhere between 13 and 24%, depending on your credit. <laughs> Not that low. Not that low. Yeah. <laughs> and there's and there's no late fees, but they will they will start increasing the the uh, the, 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 the rate. Interest rate. Yeah, how is that different from yeah. a late fee? You don't pay... We're going to increase your rate. It's That's actually the same worse thing. than a late fee. Yeah, because it keeps, yeah. It's, it's the it's gift permanent. that keeps on giving. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really weird. I mean, I don't. I uh, it's it's an easy money maker for Apple. I absolutely see the business sense of this, but that's a very very slippery piece of pond that they've stepped on the idea of making it so easy to tap a button on your phone and five seconds later they're saying get a approval if you're if you qualify to get this card so as soon as your impulse hits you that hey i want this credit card that i didn't want five minutes ago you've got this card and it's just not a good look for apple to have people who are Make it to be making a lot of money off of interest fees on a card that people maybe didn't want to begin with, but you get you get into credit card debt, and they're now in the in the business of our customers are now paying us twelve percent, fifteen percent, seventeen percent, twenty two percent, twenty four percent, which is uh, which is a a, a a a look that we've come to appreciate from Chase and from Wells Fargo and from all these other banks. It's not the sort of thing that we've come to appreciate as something that Apple would do. So I just think this is a, a logical move, move, a profitable move, but I don't know why they feel as though they have to do this. I don't know. I don't feel as though they're, they're making things any better. I, I, I think of was, credit card, I think of credit card companies as a bit they, of a dregs of society kind of, kind of thing and to, to have apple wait a minute wait a minute you think credit cards are the dregs of society 
they they prey on people and and t- they the they're necessary for us to be able to exist in society but if it weren't for credit card companies we wouldn't have had to use credit card companies to exist in society <laughs> so yeah they the whole point is for them to make money off of you because you don't have enough money yeah. and for apple to be a part of this kind of making money off of your lack of money just seems really i don't know just a little a little dirty, I think. A, a bad look. A bad look. <laughs> so, bad look. I, I mean, using using those arguments, we're, we're, we're saying that anybody with money doesn't have a credit card? I have plenty of credit cards, trust no, me. No, but, I mean, but that's because, that's because I, of the I, I way... Get, I, I get what you're saying, but I think for a lot of people, um, that was one of the announcements yesterday that really impressed me the most because Apple is making this so easy for people uh, not to get tied into to something, but to actually apply and to use and to see immediately where they're spending and what their payment can be and how much interest you're going to pay. I mean, those other dregs of society don't do that. They don't want you to pay off your your card. They try and hide as much from you, I think, as as they possibly can. Where Apple is trying to be upfront and saying. Here it is, uh, you know, and it makes sense only in the fact that it's for your phone. You know, it's for Apple Pay. Uh, that's the the main. I think, Lori, though's it, point, and I, I think it's well taken, is if you can apply for a credit card that easily, that's sucking you into a trap. And by the way, yeah, you're going to get it, but you'll there'll be limits depending on your credit. And th- notice that interest rate goes from... 13.24% up to 24%. That's got to be tied to your credit, right? It must, Your yeah. credit score. 24% interest is usurious. And I think that's your point, Lori, is that this can get people into a lot of trouble. And I think it's great, just like Jim is saying, that, that Apple is providing a very easy way for you to see how much you're spending and how In much you're spending on interest yeah. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But- we already have these kind these means of of budgeting and recognizing our finances and if we're not actively doing it ourselves what what makes apple or anybody think that having it in a in your wallet instead of on i need a budget or or mint or something like that yeah there are plenty or, of um, fintech apps that do this so yeah so if you're not already good at saving and making sure that you're paying down your credit card and not going overboard with your credit i I think it's I think it's it's wrong to assume that Apple is positioned to help people to better finance their credit just because it's Apple when the, that already exists all over in the world and hasn't helped people that that do struggle financially. Obviously, a lot of us. I, oh, yes, I'm going to get the Apple credit card. I've got great credit. I know how to manage my credit cards. I have low low balances on everything. So for me, yeah, it's great. But there are people out there who they're just going to get another credit card because there's another credit card and now they're up paying 24%. And yeah, Apple's like, you can pay twice this month in order to reduce your how much you owe. And they're going to say, no, I don't have enough money. I'm just going to keep spending. So it's, it's, it's beautiful and awesome and very dangerous to assume that having an Apple credit card is somehow going to make you better at taking care of your credit cards. Yeah. Also, I, I, I want to get the, the, the latest hot, wonderful, cool Apple design product is this cool titanium credit card. <laughs> and I never, I know, and, and because there's no annual fees, it won't cost, won't ever cost me anything. Yeah, if you and, don't use uh, it, that's a good point. You could just have a nice yeah. piece of titanium yeah. in your pocket. That and you let, might let, be I able to kill also, someone with. By the way, the only, <laughs> the really one of the only videos they showed and the only product video they showed at this event was a very Johnny Ive style Titan, the making of the titanium credit card <laughs> video, which kind of cracks me up. One, am I the only one that thinks of Magnesis or thought of Magnesis the first moment that credit card appeared on screen? The the black card from Millennials, if you remember oh, that. Oh, I do remember that. You wanna... That's immediately what I thought of. <laughs> yeah, here's... Precursor to the fire, from the people who brought you fire, the fire festival. Yeah. The Magnesis yeah, well, card, like... yeah. Luckily, Apple has already proven that they know how to put on a music festival. <laughs> so this titanium... Well that, was, well, that was mostly was. He's no longer with the cus- company. <laughs> oh, the Us Festival. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't at Apple when he did the Us Festival. Spent almost every penny he had on that thing. Um, so 
really the thing that makes this different, besides the <laughs> titanium credit card with no number on it, from other credit cards is that it's more private, right? Like Apple yeah. Pay is private. So when yeah. I use my Apple Watch or iPhone to pay at Whole Foods, Whole Foods gets a token, gets the money, but doesn't get any information about me at all. And that's what Apple is saying about this. Although, obviously, the back-end transaction handled by Goldman Sachs, they have to know all of that because they have to give me credit and know my address and all that stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to get a paper bill. But I don't know. Maybe I am. I don't know how I'm going to pay this off. Uh, how do you pay an Apple? Do you write them a check? What? I think you pay it right in the app. With yeah. what? You have, well, you, you you have no. You 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 would have to go directly <laughs> with, with another credit account. card. You can't, you can't pay. Oh, if if you have Apple Pay, that's uh, Apple Pay. I believe that's that's connected directly to a bank account, as opposed to connected to another Visa or Mastercard. I believe you could do it that way. The, the whole principle of credit is that you have to. You can't pay. For, you can't pay off credit with credit. Uh, with unsecured money. Right. So I'm sure that there's uh, so way to do that. that, that um, that's kind of an unanswered question: is how do you pay it? You'd have to uh, connect your. Maybe this is a secondary benefit to Apple. Connect your Apple Pay account to your bank account. That's something yeah. that or possibly well, PayPal Apple and others card. really love you to do. Well, there's and there's also another benefit where uh, if they are if you pay through actual Apple Pay with your phone, you're doing it through a transactor. Uh, whereas if Apple is actually the card issuer, they're 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 basically keeping all the money uh, that your Visa or your, that your Mastercard would have collected as for transacting that thing so basically you're saving the money every time you pay for something with an apple credit card as opposed to with apple pay that's connected to someone else's credit card yeah um it's it is it is nice that they've they're, they're doing a lot of stuff that any bank could have done five years ago but there's their banks they're not interested in in improving their product uh they like like the idea of what if, what if we just don't even have the numbers on the card so people can't shoulder surf them off of you and what if we have to have a we're not going to monetize your buying history uh we are obviously can't pr promise it's going to be as secret and secure as anything else that we put on the phone because this is part of credit history this is part of credit reporting well we yeah i mean that's the question does this go but, to equifax experian transunion as well, well they, it would well, it, it, would, it would almost have to, but there. Uh, so there, there, there are some advantages to it. There's some cashback features, but not as good as what you'd get on most other cards. Yeah, I, I would think. look at. I would go to um, Nerd Wallet before you sign up for this card, because yeah, they, they, it's they, not they don't great. Do like, they don't give you price matching. They don't give you buyer protection. They don't give you a lot of stuff that you would get just from your regular local bank or credit union's credit card. So as usual, you have to shop around. It's not. So maybe it's not a good idea to simply say, "Ooh." New credit card, great! I'll tap this button and go get it. Although, although on that point, I did want to I did want to point something out. Uh, Steve Aquino, who does a really great uh, journalist who covers accessibility issues, particularly with Apple, had a couple of things to say very positive about the Apple Card. That one, the process of because the process of applying is so easy, that removes a barrier for people who have accessibility issues. That's a good also, point. Also, the yeah. the fact that all these statements are again being surfaced not just as an email or, or or God forbid, a piece of printed paper, but through the iPhone and the iOS interface, that means that voiceover works with all that stuff. So, in the ability to manage your own finances, if you don't, ha if you have accessibility issues, uh, this is this is uh, he says that's a big help uh, for that sort of stuff. So, so there, there, uh, this isn't. A, I'm not. I don't want to say that this is a bad idea, full, uh, start to finish. I don't think it's bad at all. But I think that again, I don't like. The, I don't like the 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 idea of people owing having a struggling to pay off 22% 24% interest to apple and apple making money off of that i also don't think they're doing and it's just a weird business for them to be in. It's a very profitable business yeah. for them to be in, but it's not. Uh, this is this is the this was for me. This was the keynote for uh, for almost every announcement. It's like I, I I found myself thinking, what if Nabisco made each of these <laughs> announcements? What if Nabisco said we're doing and now we have a Nabisco credit card? Yes, they could have done this. They probably wouldn't have done this a whole lot differently because they would have gone through uh, a, a, a middle transactor that would give you these features. And now we've got we we decided we because we've got lots and lots of profits, we're buying lots and lots of content for our own streaming service. Again, that's not dissimilar to how Nabisco or any other company would have done this. So that's why I'm not. Uh, I'm just so meh on this 
on this Apple card and so much of what was announced yesterday. I do want a titanium card, but I think you're right, Andy. Just don't use it. Then you yeah, get the I best mean, of it, both worlds. And you probably cut meat with it because it's, you know, titanium. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so another, another thing that Steve, Steve Wozniak was first with. I think of, yeah, right. I think a very uh, good point, though, about uh, accessibility. So that's, that's good. Yeah. But, you know, that's, uh, I think before you apply for this card, it would be prudent to go to Nerd Wallet or some other site where you can compare rates, compare cash back, and see if this is the best thing you can get. Somebody yeah. pointed out, you, so you get 1% on real-life transactions, non-Apple Pay transactions. You get 2% on Apple Pay transactions, 3% on Apple purchases from Apple. Uh, but somebody pointed out, or I could use my Target card to buy my next iPhone at Target and get 5% back. And so you really, it's important to, to consider all of these uh, things. It's sexy, yeah. it's hot, but honestly, when you really get down to it, it's not so different than a credit card. Yeah, and because it is a master, it does present as a MasterCard when it's presented to uh, to just a regular uh, till. The other the other thing that I've uh, it's they said that they're not gonna, it's another another one of those announcements that's going to take months before it's actually released. Um, I'm going to be fascinated by the pages and pages of fine print because something that uh, a friend was sort of kind of uh, almost jokingly bring up with me saying well so if you're if you're behind on your uh, on your apple credit card does that could they turn off your access to icloud as a way of pressuring you to pay your bill do they have the ability to limit your access to devices if they feel as though yeah. you are so far there behind, there would be that we problems. Want to I'm sure if they yeah, started yeah. doing do that. I don't. I, I. I. have no idea. I'm not. I'm not saying they would, but I'm saying I, I'd be. This is the sort of stuff that I. I find myself asking. I, I find myself realizing that I don't know if they could or couldn't do that. And it would depend on their terms of service. It would depend on what you what you agreed to when you tapped a button <laughs> and waited for five waited five seconds to. to it be. It depends on what all the stuff that you acknowledge that you read and agreed to without actually reading or agreeing so one to any thing, of it. One thing that is clear with the whole event is this really is Apple pivoting away from hardware. They made all the hardware announcements by press yeah. release last week and moving towards services. And that's what Tim, if, in fact, if, you know, if Chief Jobs' signature achievement was the Mac, the iPhone, the iPad, the iPod, Tim Cook's signature achievement may well be that, pivoting to services and creating services the uh, editorial on Investopedia says that the real point of the Apple card is it's the ultimate loyalty tool. It's its stickiness. Mm -hmm. And I would say that just as Apple News is about bringing you into Apple's ecosystem, uh, everything announced yesterday is about bringing you into Apple's ecosystem and increasing uh, your value, your dollar value per user. That yeah. Not by purchases of Apple products, but by using Apple services and that's uh, an interesting shift uh to you know to apple's business model it's a big it's a big shift uh yeah. besides uh now as we as we go down the the rabbit hole here we're going to get farther and farther out and less and less <laughs> details the next was apple arcade which is and we don't know when it'll be available sometimes this fall we don't know what it will cost apple says you'll have a hundred games to play for a subscription fee uh, none of those games will be free or freemium. No in-app purchases. They'll all be, you pay in them, you know, normally you pay an amount to play the game, but you'll pay one flat fee and get access to all of those games. It looked like they were really targeting indie uh, game labs. They didn't announce any titles. Uh, I guess they'll all be exclusive, though. They did say you won't be able to play yeah. these games anywhere else. And they're and they're also helping funding uh, the creation of some of these ah, games too. I didn't hear that. So, oh, that's interesting. So that's yeah. a very positive thing. I, I like uh, this is one of the this is actually probably my favorite announcement because that's it solves a really really huge problem, particularly for parents. Uh, the ability to simply say, "Here, kid, any game that's in this that's in this uh, this uh, Apple game subscription, you can play it forever, do whatever you want." Knowing that number one, it's very very tightly curated. You're not going to find nastiness in there because this is all essential 
essentially Apple published games. Uh, there's no place where they're going to see advertisements. There's no place where they're going to be encouraged to buy more. Well, Simpsons and that's from a parent's point of view. That, that's the most important thing is that you're not yeah. going to stack up big charges for uh, yeah. Simpsons donuts yeah. and things like that. And, and and I love the idea of, of Apple supporting independent creators. I, I've some of the some of the greatest classes of soft the greatest class of software from times in terms of creativity is gaming because this is probably the le the lace the last class of widely distributed software that you can conceivably have just two absolute mutants writing this get writing this thing uh, uh, every single night uh, after they get off of work for months and months and months it could be just the most bizarre thing that just these two mutants think is a wonderful <laughs> idea for a game and then your mind your mind is blown away because you have never ever seen anything like this before <laughs> so, so how much am, is this going to cost? Probably the the furthest thing from a gamer that you could ever <laughs> get in in the tech world. I I don't play games. I really have no interest in playing games. I'd rather play my guitar. But what they did with arcade yesterday signals to me how serious they are about services. You know, we all knew that this was going uh, a, a big services uh, uh, event. But the gaming one, gamings are, are some of the most popular items on the App Store. And to pull all that stuff together and now say, and we're going to have this uh, Apple Arcade. I mean, they are, they are trying to uh, leverage every bit of services that they can. And I'm not saying that they're you know, wrong in doing the arcade. I think it's great that they're doing it. And like Andy said, even helping uh, developers bring some of these games to life. I, that's all great stuff. But it's also uh, a great revenue stream for Apple, too, so, to say, okay, here you go. Here's so 100 games. I don't know what the average cost for games is, but uh, you know, I think it's pretty typically under $10 for these kinds of games, maybe 5 to $8. Uh, you get 100 games, unlimited play, as long as you keep playing that monthly fee. What is the fee? They didn't say. Unknown. No, I know, but what would... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Spec $10? I, uh, Spe I, yeah. I would say $10. Probably 10 Everything there's mentioning has to be ten bucks. Yeah, that's that's what you're. That you can't be so far ahead of your Netflix subscription that people are that people will ask themselves, "Is this going to entertain me one uh, point good point five times more than my Netflix <laughs> subscription right. does?" So, as as negative and skeptical as I am of all of these things, I will probably buy them all, <laughs> and maybe that's the secret to the success for testing here. Purposes, for test, for well, no, it just makes sense. Testing you know, purposes. if it's 10 bucks, yeah. it depends what it is. If it's 50 bucks a month, I won't. Yeah. But I pay 60 bucks. No, maybe it's a little more than that a year for Microsoft's version of this, uh, which allows me access to some number of titles. Uh, it downloads the game just like this does. Yeah. You play, it's not a streaming service. And it's worth it to me because it's, and this is where the calculus is for me, it costs about the same as two games a year. Yeah. And so I know but I'm going to buy that many games at least a year. So it makes sense uh, for me to buy yeah. that. I think that's the calculus people will make here. It's 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 nice. The, the the problem is that I I a few years ago I'm I'm embarrassed to say, to indicate that I'm this irresponsible with my money. But a few <laughs> years ago I actually had to make it a recurring calendar thing to audit all of my yes, <laughs> all of my subscriptions. Auto pay stuff yes, to figure out that oh I'm actually paying I, I'm actually paying sixty dollars a month for things that I signed up for yes. just to try them out or write about them. Exactly. But then I forgot to do it. Uh, and or I even worse, well. where we yeah, all exactly. do that. In fact, that's a monetization strategy, <laughs> right? Exactly. So, so that so that that's a a danger for that's my responsibility. Yes, but the 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 problem it creates is that it's a it's it's a great value to have a hundred games for ten bucks a month. But I'm a lot of people are going to have to say I'm already paying. Here's a, here's what I'm paying for Hulu. Here's what I'm paying for Netflix. Here's what I'm paying for right. my Dropbox storage. Here's what I'm paying for uh, my my hosting no, but, for but my website or whatever. That isn't and the calculation. I'm, do I have another ten bucks? That's not the calculation. I don't think. I think people's calculation will be like more like mine, which is, well, I played games this year. How much did I spend on games this year? Independent of yeah. these other things. I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm not thinking. Oh, I can't buy this game. I gotta have my Netflix. So that's the amount of money Apple's gonna think about. Is well, what's that amount of money, and how can we make that a little lower? I think there's a second benefit that a lot of people. At least this fits my mode. I'm constantly looking for something fun to do, another yeah. game to play, and that's actually a lot of work. And you often buy games that are crappy, 
And so a curated <laughs> selection of 100 games, it's almost, I would think, guaranteed to have one or two that I want to play for a month. And if yeah. they refresh those regularly, if it's the same 100 games all year, that's not as good. But if they refresh those regularly, that's pretty compelling because it not, not yeah. only is it a price somewhat similar, I'm hoping, to what I'd be paying, probably less than what I'd be paying anyway, but it's helping me by picking, by putting games there that I don't have to think about and they'll just have something fun to do. So yeah. I think they're, yeah, I, I think, think this the, is going to be a success. Game, the game discovery aspect of it, which is one of the hardest things exactly. when, when you go into the app store and you're just looking for a good game to play, it's difficult to know. There's just so much out there. And, and to, unless you're reading about these games, you don't know what's good or what's bad or what's in your wheelhouse or in your style. And this, this, sort of, you know, bundle of a hundred games and that might increase in the future gives you the chance to just play the games, whether or not you like them, you just try it out and go, well, I played that for 10 minutes. I think it's dumb. I'll move on. But you're, you're not losing out on any money by doing that. And you don't have to um, beg developers to make products for free. These developers are getting to um, make these, make these apps and get their apps, their games funded. And I actually don't know how the, the, the money is divvied out after just being funded. Are they going to get a cut of the yeah. of the the monthly subscription? I wonder. Uh, that, that definitely popped into my head. Of like, I think it's great that Apple is helping fund the creation of these, but then what? Because you know, Maybe some of these things are going to. Is it an investment or a grant? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and and also, is that a fixed number? One hundred games. So when they book their 101st game, they have to drop one from the catalog or will the value of the catalog just get better and better no, and that's better how as more works. games? And I think it's a good way yeah. for it to work because you want to keep it fresh. Uh, presumably all these games would be available standalone for purchase, right? No, the, no these I think are exclusive they're saying, inside. Yeah. You have to subscribe exclusive. to get these games? Yeah, they will. There's 100% of the games will not be available anywhere else but inside. Oh, Apple that Arcade. I think that makes it a little harder to sell to developers because there's no opportunity. Are you sure well, we, it said we, that? Well, we don't. Yeah, yeah they they, they said they they said that they're uh, they're arcade exclusives, but that's part of the frustrating thing about. Well, but what does exclusive mean? Only in on Apple or not? I mean, obviously, you can't no, play it on Android. Only in Apple Arcade. They they it was. I wish I had the clip for it. It said they specifically oh, said that they're exclusive to Apple Arcade. See, if I'm Oceanhorn, and Oceanhorn is one of the Oceanhorn Two is one of the games. They made a ton of money selling that game outright on the App Store. A ton, millions of dollars. That is a big gamble for them to say, okay, we'll put it in arcade. They had you know they had Sonic the yeah, Hedgehog. Unless, is Sega gonna say, Oh, we're gonna we're gonna turn our back on tens of millions of dollars, maybe well, hundreds no, of maybe, millions of dollars? Maybe maybe they'll create a special Sonic themed game for that's specifically for uh, for arcade, but they'll also have a paid app that has more worlds, more lands, well, or then least, that's gonna be just, a problem. The real thing. Yeah. Well not not, not 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 that the arcade version is demo where, but We've seen we, if the we, arcade you, version you buy, is you buy worse. Pokemon in all kinds of different games and all kinds of different. I, I'm I'm worried in that case that the if if what I'm getting for my subscription is a lesser game, or a game that isn't good enough to make money in the app store, that is a non-starter. Well, this is this is the, the problem with almost all these announcements: the lack of details and yeah. it's the finer yeah. points that will really, like. For instance, uh, I would have I I would think would be very exciting if the deal with developers is that we get an absolute worldwide exclusive for six months after which right. this is your game you can sell it or you can print we can put it on another platform you can put it in the app store but pursuant to our app store rules whatever you want to do but yeah if it becomes that as, as if it becomes that these it goes to the lens of ghosts and wins as soon as apple decides that they don't want to have it on the in, in the arcade <laughs> anymore that's a problem and that is a what? as you say a problem for how to convince a developer uh to write for this platform it's already a problem for for i mean look at uh fortnite which is a free game and Tim Sweeney, the creator of it, has made $7 billion last year <laughs> in in-app purchases. It's not eligible for arcade. And even if it were, is Tim Sweeney going to forego $7 billion? This is, mm. uh, this is the well, real but, risk that Apple's going to get yeah. only kind of mediocre games that wouldn't probably make it in the app store. Or, well, not, or not Apple's going to get really fantastic games that couldn't have been made without the help of Apple's funding. I, I think you you might be, I, I see this as a, a way for indie developers to make fantastic games because they're getting help to get these games made. It's just a matter of what 
what then becomes of these games and and the the people that developed them once they're just in the in yeah. Apple Arcade, will they continue to have the avenue to make money off of this game somehow in the future? Like maybe maybe Apple, Apple has, has a six month sort of, exclusive, and then after that you can. And then it's no longer in arcade, but number one, Apple right. just helped a developer make a game, and then number two, after the exclusivity is over, they get to do whatever they want with the game. Like it, it again, we don't know the rules, but I don't think it's. I don't think we're looking at. If you look at some of the visuals that are on the um, Apple Arcade page from Apple. There's a lot of these games look incredible and they look like the king, the kind of games that indie developers have to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week with no help and no money. And to have Apple come in and say, here's, here's some money, do it, make it happen, hire some extra people, do what you got to do. Then they get to actually improve their ability to make a great game. And you don't have a bunch of people downloading a 599 game in the app store and saying this game is way too expensive i should get it for a dollar 99 because that's what most people say when they pay yeah. more than a dollar 99 for an app or a game they don't consider how hard the developer worked and in this case the developer worked hard the developer got funding it's ten dollars a month no matter what so <laughs> it, for you you don't you're not feeling the weight of what you paid for the game whether you like it or hate it this will be interesting. I, I think the devil will be in the details. If, for instance, I get level one of Monument Valley in the arcade, but if you want Monument Valley 2, you go buy it. This is yeah, going to be less I, interesting. I, I, I don't think that's what Apple would do. But what but what I'm thinking of is uh, the characters from Cuphead are amazing. The animation is amazing. <laughs> so if those developers wanted to create a new game that's optimized for a small screen like an iPhone using the Cuphead characters, that would be, if you had no idea that the console game even existed, you would still think this is a, an incredibly cool, old-timey, hand-animated hand action arcade game. But then, so they would be almost willing to do that because it, it introduces people to the world of Cuphead mm -hmm. and gets yeah. them to maybe then uh, go on to the Nintendo's when they oh you are you're, you also have a Nintendo Switch well we also have this really huge multi world game called 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 don't don't gamble with the devil uh, for your <laughs> Nintendo Switch oh, of course it's not it's not free with your subscription but well the people you have to convince are developers and uh, developing yep. a game is a arduous expensive process and Apple's going to yep. have to convince them that it's in their interest uh, to give this uh, an exclusive. I well, wonder if we'll 100 games are going to be ready this fall or if it's only going to be, you know, 10 <laughs> or 15 of them. I mean, look, no, Google, announced, an Apple be ready. Google announced Stadia last week <laughs> with zero games. Well, they had a Doom re <laughs> rehash. That's it. So <laughs> we'll see. If you're, you know, if you're a game studio, you have some interesting options right now. Um, okay. this, is, this is a very interesting play. Uh, let's take a little break, and then we'll finally talk about Apple and television, which is, of course, what everybody was waiting. I was waiting personally to see if Oprah was going to show up, and she did, in a cape <laughs> and a bolo tie. It was interesting. But first, a word from Atlassian. Atlassian powers our IT here. Uh, we've been happy at Atlassian House for the very longest of times, years now, using Jira, which is, of course, probably Atlassian's most famous tool to keep track of projects who's working on them and the status of the project it's a great way to kind of give get everybody on the same page and it's nice because it integrates with the other tool we use the most confluence so we can document what's going on where our workflow is so people who come later can see what happened but that's just the start our it team is the center of our operation and i bet you in your business it is too it is, is often the department that executes and then keeps it from breaking, and then fixes it when it's broken. And if you think about it, everything else is, is depending on IT. IT teams have to work fast. They have to work accurately. Applications are more complex than they've ever been. Incidents require a team that's open, agile, and can coordinate between operations and software development teams. It's a challenging world. Expectations are high, the stakes are high, and it's IT that's right smack dab in the middle. You fall short inside of business critical workflows, and, and you fall a long way. That's why Atlassian is such a great choice. Software tools, not just for developers, but an affordable, reliable suite of tools for teams of all kinds and all sizes, from DevOps to Agile, 
from IT apps to ops to ITSM and whatever's next for your IT department. Atlassian provides a technology backbone to help modern IT organizations plan, service, and support the kind of change that propels business. Be an IT hero. Take a look at Jira's amazing tool. Everybody knows Jira just loves it. Confluence. If you've got a code base, you've got to get Bitbucket. But then there's also Ops Genie and Status Page that helps you better detect incidents, coordinate response efforts, resolve issues faster. And as a customer of the IT department, I think this is really important. Keep customers or stakeholders or partners and colleagues up to date so we know what's going on. Your IT team can choose tools that are right for your current framework, but trust that as you grow, those tools will grow with you. And it all integrates seamlessly with Jira and Confluence so you never have to leave that nice, happy, warm place that is Atlassian. Like all of Atlassian's products, the tools for your IT team are easy to use and, importantly, free to try when you go to Atlassian.com slash IT. Find out which Atlassian offering is right for your team. Try Atlassian today to see what IT can be. Atlassian.com slash IT. Very famously in Walter Isaacson's biography of Steve Jobs, Steve on his deathbed said, Walter, I, we, we've licked it. We've figured out TV. Is this it? Is Apple TV Plus what Steve Jobs was talking about? I think there's no way to tell what, what Steve was, was talking about. Who knows? But this is where they are right now. And, you know, there were a few different announcements yesterday with um, with TV you know, Apple channels, Apple TV app, and then finally the the original content. And, and you know, none of it of is them, coming till this fall, and we don't know how much. So right. Some of so it is coming I, in May, actually. What? Oh, uh, they're the, going to the change the app by May? Is, they're going to yeah. update in it? In May, okay. yeah. Okay. The Apple so, TV Plus, or sorry, TV Plus doesn't come out till the fall. Oh, okay, got it. I would have loved to have some, some more detail on uh, what's going on here. And, and I said yesterday, I was, as I was walking into the event on Twitter, that today is the day of details and that's what really matters. And, you know, unfortunately for, uh, f for, for us, we didn't get a lot of details on some of this stuff, but looking at the videos themselves uh, and the, the trailers. What's I funny is they didn't show those on the, at the event, did they? They had people come out and try to read teleprompters, but they didn't show a lot of clips. <laughs> they they did have uh, they did have some, and you know, there's some compelling content here, and I'll be the first to admit that I was I was very worried about the content that they would have, but listening to the directors, and I mean, you know, Ron Howard and and Steven Spielberg and J.J. Abrams, there's some there's some big talent here making these these shows and you know as much as some of the content uh, might not be for me I, of course not all of all content is going to be for everybody but I'm interested in watching these shows to to judge the, the quality and you know where Apple is going with this I'm I'm really excited about what they announced now the Apple TV app when you when you look at that yeah there's some some changes that definitely need to be done to the Apple TV app. I think it's a good step. I I hate going to the uh, Apple TV app uh, to the TV app in there and you know keep bouncing out uh, into separate apps and bouncing all over the place. So uh, you know whatever changes they can make in that respect uh, is going to be very welcome. But you know, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait and see um, until the fall about pricing, about how they're going to be released. I mean, are they just going to dump everything uh, day one or are they going to stagger everything? Or there's a, still a lot of questions after the event. Possibly more questions than before the event. Um, I, I think just for TV Plus specifically, I'm still very confused. I, I see that they um, had some official announcements about the TV shows that we're, we're going to get with TV Plus, but they didn't really explain to me a lot of the other things about it. Is this is this it? Is it just, is the subscription service literally only exclusive Apple TV made shows, or are they going to incorporate some other things into that? There, there was mention of um, being able to um, 
uh, buy movies and TV shows from iTunes right within the TV app, but that they didn't really clarify whether or not this was going to be full. Any of this was going to be folded into um, TV plus, which I kind of don't think that that's the case. I re- like if, if that's true, I'm disappointed because I wanted TV plus to be um, more encompassing and make it easier for me to digest a lot of media, not just five TV shows that Apple made exclusively. I think they look great and they've been, they're being um, directed and produced and starring a lot of incredible people. So I'm, I love this, but I want, I want TV plus to be more than just a handful of exclusive TV shows, which will most likely grow, but I'd like it to have more in it. It, It's more like HBO and less like, um, Hulu, let's say, or, 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 um, YouTube TV or something where you, you get a lot of different things mixed in with it. Actually, it's not even like HBO because HBO has a lot of movies that they provide within their service too. So I don't know. I want more than just the TV shows. Yeah, I, I really saw nothing yesterday that got me the slightest bit interested in this service. It's not I, again. I, I'm not judging it yet because we don't have any information upon which to make a judgment. Uh, they have they have signed up some really big named, uh, popular talent to create shows, just like every other streaming platform, and just like every network, and just like every premium channel. Uh, are they going to have a catalog of other content to rely on? Uh, because good luck, because Disney, the Disney Fox merger went through, which means that uh, Disney has access to the Disney catalog, the Fox catalog, of course, the Pixar catalog. They also own 60% of Hulu now, uh, which is producing their own original series content, as well as having uh, the current episodes of pretty much um, of most of the many of the shows that uh, uh, that people actually want to watch these days. Uh, it's are, are they going to be sending people to Sundance and all the other uh, and all all the other places, uh, festivals to buy documentaries, buy uh, independent movies like Netflix is, like Hulu is, like all these other channels are. Uh, I just uh, and then they haven't even started talking about uh, talking about uh, what the pricing is going to be. Uh, but we also we they haven't they've announced that they're going to at some date in the future make the app available for Roku, but they haven't said anything about Android. That's uh, I consider that to be a problem. And then we get to the problem of you have as good as a reboot of Amazing Stories is, it might not be. I'm, I can only speak for myself. It might not be something that I like. It might be one of those many many shows that I hugely anticipate but then three episodes in i find myself forgetting to actually watch it even though it's right there on my streaming box uh because uh if apple can't deliver a wide variety of stuff uh that to appease all the people who are going to be hopefully subscribing to this service they're kind of sunk and lastly i'm not conv- this is something that I, I would spend i did a lot of beard stroking like last night <laughs> as i'm trying to figure out why i'm having such a muted reaction to this and part of it was I don't see Apple as, as Apple's very, very proud of all the money they're putting into original content. And it's it's a really huge push. It's not trivial. It's a huge, huge push. But I don't see them as being willing to make a movie that's going to get people mad. I don't see them as wanting to create a series that's going to be divisive. Uh, I, I see them as if they were making it's going to be Little helping, House on the Prairie, not Breaking Bad. Well, maybe not quite that, but I I, I see them co-producing Stanley Kubrick movies and saying, the thing is, we're really, really, do we really have to have ga- like hundreds need, of gallons of blood? Do you need flow an elevator? The- yeah, do you need that? that? And, <laughs> and about this ending to 2001, we need some resolution there. Like, okay, what does he see? Maybe we have a reverse well, this shot. Is, so this we is see one of the through. things that artists say about HBO is that they get creative freedom. It's one of the ways HBO yeah. does attract such talent now apple i guess it's the same kind of question you can ask can 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 george steinbrenner's payroll win a pennant for the yankees Mm. can you can you create a great network just by buying the best talent and maybe you can i mean these people have a great it doesn't hurt it's a good starting point if you you trust them to do their jobs but you have to let them do their job yeah one, one of the lines that kind of worried me was when Tim, I can't quote it verbatim, but talking about Apple's history of uh, Apple's style of storytelling, ability to tell st- history of telling stories. And I'm like, dude, you don't you make f- gadgets. 
you make bad services for files and stuff. You've never, you're not a storytelling no, machine. Apple's, you're, Apple's you are, marketing you're, machine is not a story. It tell yeah, stories, like, but it's again, not. This, this, this really is like the, the tech billionaire who buys a basketball team, yeah, and now they feel as though they're yeah. in their their professional sports player. No, yeah. no, no. You you were you you were great at writing that check, and you get to wear the special hat at the at court side, but. Let's, well, don't tell people how to live. Also, we yeah. heard nothing that we didn't already know. Yeah. Uh, and and not just from leaks, but I mean, just basically this. this is this is so scant that it was just all the stuff we already knew. If it, aside from the originals, the only thing interesting was the originals. What Apple's doing with Apple TV is totally uninspiring, mostly because not Apple's fault. They couldn't get television networks or sport events or any, they couldn't get cooperation from any any of the content people they had to write checks for that stuff and honestly the fact that i could buy hbo go in in the app store doesn't do any good for me because i'm a cable subscriber i already have hbo i still will have to go through the abysmal arcane process of activating hbo in the apple tv by going through a bunch of websites and logging into xfinity and Every month I have to do that. That's not going to be fixed. So well, but that's that's still good because remember the people who are buying these are people who not who don't. It, it's old fashioned to buy an HBO subscription that's attached to a cable box that is installed at a permanent address. We're talking about kids who want to have their so own. So that's HBO who they're aiming this at. Well, that's it's it's a difference in the way that TV is being consumed. That you have. Yeah, I understand. A la carte, you're buying you're device. buying those networks. Yeah, and they and they'll be cheap, right? They're ten bucks, which is cheaper than HBO yeah. now. Uh, but a la carte, it's fifteen dollars, yeah. I think, normally. Yeah, and and to be fair, it's there's they're building this thing up. They don't they're not going to fail in their first two months. It's going to take us three years to see once they have an opportunity to build up this offering into what they hoped it would be or in the case of the apple watch they observe how people are using this and realize their first vision was totally wrong but we have to, we have a chance to, to mend our ways so uh, there uh, we can't we won't be i don't think i'll be able to say that if i don't if i don't like it by september or october i think i would be wrong to say oh this is a whole this is a failure no oh, and they've God, made some progress person. i mean but for a long time i wouldn't use the apple tv app uh, yeah. on my uh, Apple TV. Now I do. It is my homepage now. So they've made yeah. some progress. Uh, the it's idea that being that you go to one place and, and find everything you want. Um, it's, it's, just a, it's a checkbook move. Anyone with a big enough checkbook could could have done this. I don't. Yeah. I don't see any Apple touches to this to say that we've uh, we've solved the problem or we've 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 uh, we've found points of friction that people are having with watching TV in 2019 and we've solved them. They maybe they have, but they didn't share it with us yesterday. Yeah. One thing that I thought was maybe the biggest part of this announcement is. You won't have to have an Apple TV anymore. That they're going to yep. partner with Samsung, Sony, LG uh, to put Apple TV in those smart televisions. Kind of, and like, that was one of the biggest points to I me. Think so. And again, going back to what I said about uh, uh, the Games Arcade, this announcement that they were going to put uh, Apple t the the, uh, the TV app in the smart TVs. That's all about services. That's all about getting those services out to as many people as possible, which, again, shows how important services are becoming to to Apple. It was just that that part of the announcement was a pretty incredible step. How badly does it hurt that Netflix won't play in this? I don't think that I I mean, obviously, it would it would have helped, you know, to have that kind of additional. But when the TV app first launched um, for iOS and, and Apple TV and all that, a lot of these um, streaming services didn't sort of participate in that in that find it all in one place idea that Apple was doing. It didn't hurt anybody. Um, it's a little annoying when you would you'd pop into the TV app and um, Netflix wasn't appearing in the, you know, what you've recently watched section or something like that. But um, I don't think it really, I don't think it will stop anybody from checking out or from using the TV app to, to digest their information. And but there, it's, it's just I, one I, little extra thing. And there are a lot of people with Fire TV sticks and uh, Roku boxes who will now be able to install the Apple TV app. I, I, am I wrong to say Fire TV? For sure, it was, Roku. No, that's right. It was Fire yeah, TV. That was, yeah. That's kind of a surprise because Amazon and Apple have never... I mean, they, they're natural... Also, 
enemies yeah. in this. But of course, Amazon Prime is on the Apple TV app. Yeah, it's strange. I, I I do think that not having Netflix is a bigger pro is, is a non-trivial issue because I if if I understand how this app is supposed to work and i'm not suggesting that i absolutely do uh it, it seems as though it, it works best for apple if essentially the apple tv app is the hdmi one of your tv where you turn on your you pick up your remote and you are and your your, your screen lights up first off into the apple tv app and you never ever every time you leave that app to, to go someplace else Apple loses a little bit. So if they could have Netflix, if they could have convinced Netflix to uh, create a compatible version of the app so that it could be integrated <clears throat> into uh, into the Apple TV app, they're c considering how many people already subscribe to Netflix, that is another opportunity to get people to not leave the environment of the Apple TV app. So uh, it's not it's not fatal, but it would what a coup it would have been if Apple created. Uh, created a an app that was sort of like an app launcher that doesn't care if the Netflix app, <laughs> if Netflix or if Hulu or if any of these other individual apps made it cut a deal with the company at all. They could just simply say, guess what? We to in, in, to this device, we just appear to be an application launcher. So by the way, here's all the apps that are installed on your Android TV or on your Roku or on your Apple TV or your smart TV. Just drag them into this bin, and now you never ever ever have to deal with that horrible Samsung interface or that Samsung data collection <laughs> ever again? Well, that's an interesting question. If you put yeah. an Apple TV app in Samsung's TV... They're, all TVs are really, really leaky in terms does, of privacy. Does they're Samsung just, horrible. get that data? I don't I don't see how you get around that. I don't, I don't know. Maybe may, they... I suspect that they could... Does, they could cloak the traffic between the app and the internet and the and the network but they wouldn't be able to prevent Samsung from being able to know what clicks are happening or right. when the launch and happens and they put microphones I, on those TVs to listen to what you're watching and they yeah i think they probably I'm sure, know I'm sure, what's going on i'm sure they thought of, i'm sure they thought of that like, you don't you don't put up billboards of that size in so many places without w not wanting to get caught saying oh that's right. We actually are walking all of our users into handing over to Samsung I, all I, of their traffic and, data. And, and, oh, that was bad. Also, in a meta topic on this, Apple, of course, is now doubling down on privacy, and and uh, rightly so. I mean, every single one of these products had yeah. a kind of a privacy angle on it. But I, 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 and I know we care about it, and we talk a lot about it. But I wonder, in the long run, and we asked I asked this on iOS today as well, but I'll ask you guys. Do real people, are they really going to be moved by this? For instance, are they going to get rid of all their credit cards and use an Apple credit card because it's private? Nope. It, the, nope. That unfortunately, um, the, the, the everyday people don't care about how rich they are in data. They know um, it. I think they understand now. We've made that, they just don't beat care. that drum, but it's like, well, I understand. I'm, I wish it didn't, but it does. And, I, you know, Equifax knows everything about me and that's life. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, under the, it, the firm that belief that the only time people care about their privacy is when there is um, a news story saying that Facebook released all this data and people get upset and Facebook still makes a billion dollars because people don't really care. And I've said this before, there are so many instances where companies will put out uh, fill out this form and get ten dollars off. You know, get this coupon, and people will go fill it out and give all their information yeah. away for that. Who coupon. doesn't so, have an affinity card for their grocery store? Yeah. So you know, I really don't think that that people care as much as what we may want them to, or we may think that they do. I think that they care only when the headlines suggest that they should care. And then they go back into their their world of uh, you know Facebook and and Google and Samsung and all of this. And when the privacy ads come out, they may think, yeah, you know what, that is a good idea. But are they going to give up their credit cards for an Apple card? No. Do they feel better by using an iPhone instead of a Samsung? I think a lot of that depends on the price. But yes, they probably do feel better. <laughs> But uh, there's there's all kinds of levels of caring about privacy, and those levels 
will dictate what they purchase. So if money is is um, one of those levels of concerns for people, then privacy will step down a bit, you know, and they'll go get a yeah. Samsung phone with Android and not not worry so much about privacy. But if money isn't an issue, they'll probably buy an iPhone and feel better about their privacy, even though they still go on Facebook all the time, you know, <laughs> so. I, I think that there uh, generally people will care about privacy, but care to uh, the levels of other categories that matter to them. Yeah, I th but I, I do. But I do think that Apple has a really, really good uh, angle to pursue here. Uh, I don't think the, I, I, I do agree that I don't think most people have privacy and security at the front of their minds. Uh, either they think that this is like the weather, that's something you can't change. So you may as well just live in the world you live in or they're just not aware of exactly the risks that they're going under. But I think that if Apple has if Apple has the opportunity to keep saying that our product is uncontaminated by dihydrogen monoxide, whereas our competitor's <laughs> project is loaded with dihydrogen monoxide. People are not necessarily don't don't know what dihydrogen dihydrogen monoxide is, but they're thinking, well, it's a good thing that the mm. Apple product doesn't have it. So if, if Apple keeps saying that we are the more secure, the most secure product, if it's an A or B thing, they're making a very very strong positive that they no one thinks that a greater a greater and tighter security on their device is a negative thing. No one is going to react negatively to that. So they and they and and let's also give it up to Apple. They can legitimately make this claim. They are a security security is really just one of the ten commandments that they this company was re was rebooted on. And what a better way to make yourself stand out in a crowded tech market than to say your company does it. I think it's a brilliant campaign move for Apple to be promoting privacy and security when they are the only ones that are doing it to the level that they can claim they're doing it because that does make them stand out from all the rest of the devices. Uh, it's agreed. kind of a brilliant marketing thing but on their part. The, my question is, is it enough to it's good. It's good. It's a good thing to put in, but it's change people's buying habits. And, and just, it sounds like just it like what Jim was saying, not not, not really. most people, not really, yeah. and especially where money is is an important factor. And yeah. and even aside from just money, even just aside from whether you buy an Android device or an Apple device, um, the that what he what Jim had said about, it, and then you go on your Facebook with it. It's uh, it, we don't really understand what's being done with our data. I've said this a million times. Um, we need to be much better informed and have much more transparency on what's being done with our data so that we can make decisions about whether or not we want to pursue, say, for example, an iPhone over an Android phone because of what we do or don't know is being done with our data. And, and I think without understanding it, we give it away much more. But if we were more aware of the companies that were, um, you know, sort of packaging our data and then selling it to other companies. I don't mean, uh, you know, X company is selling me to Y company. I mean these companies that collect this data and then package this data as as a as an advertisement data package to somebody that they use to advertise to us. If we knew more details about that information, about that stuff that was being collected, I have a feeling a lot more people that right now shrug and say, meh. There's nothing I can do about it. They would look at that data and say, wait, what? I'm not going to participate in this anymore. And then back away from that and and start really caring about their privacy and, and what's being done with their data. If we knew exactly everything that, that these companies know about us, it would probably scare us to death. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. uh, we we have an idea, oh, we're being tracked and oh, we, you know, uh, these companies are selling information about us. It's probably so in-depth that uh, we would just be d taken aback with it. So yeah. uh, on, uh, on, we're going to wrap it up on balance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great event yesterday, uh, so ho hum event. I, I, what, what, what do you all think? Let's start with you, Lori. Okay. Well, since it was my first Apple event, it was really exciting and incredible. But to be totally honest, and because I haven't attended any other events before, it felt kind of low key. I expected. The theater to be there was a lot of cheering. I know it wasn't you and Renee, but it there didn't was feel like it. <laughs> it didn't feel like it was that. Uh, I don't know. There's there's something about when I watched it when I've watched it remotely. Um, there's anxiety and excitement and oh my gosh and it really kind of felt like okay okay this is good wait 
That's all you're telling us about it? Okay, this is good. <laughs> Wait, we don't know how much it's going to cost yet? So it felt a little more low-key to me. Yeah, details were scant. But I think people <laughs> report the same thing when they went to the... Uh, the uh, filming of the moon landing, they were there watching it. It was much less exciting than those of us at home thinking we were actually seeing people walk on the moon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, Jim, you boy. were in, you were there, but you've been to many before that. Was this any different from previous events? Um, I, well, I've been to going to every Apple event since 99 or 2000. Um, Lori is right in, in a, couple of points that you know i i think we all wanted more detail on this and we we walked away feeling like oh i wish i i knew how much this bundle was going to cost but it's not something that apple needs to release right now or obviously they didn't want to release right now uh, there's still time for that to come um in the fall when when they do that uh the 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 when the lights went out and and they pop back on and Steven Spielberg standing there and you know that that part was was exciting. We did get some details on the shows that I think is important. We got some details on the channels and and the new uh, app. You know we got all kinds of details here. I think my biggest takeaway from that whole event. Uh, instead of the excitement of, you know, a hands-on area and a new iPhone, you know, what you see in the September event, I, I think my biggest takeaway was how serious Apple is about services right now. We've heard Tim talk about it on, on financial conference calls now uh, for a number of quarters, and we've seen those uh, services go up uh, in, in quarterly earnings. And I think now we're really starting to get a... a, a little picture of just how important this stuff is and it's going to continue to be andy what do you think um i thought it was a pretty boring event uh start to finish i thought there was so it was just criminally thin on actual details i don't think they should have held the event uh this early or if they had made an announcement they shouldn't have had it in the form that they decided to to have it uh, it's it was just frustrating and Lori, it's like you you welcome welcome to the world of like actually attending <laughs> Apple <laughs> events. They they are cool, but it's uh, th this is why sometimes I have to take like a day to after I've attended uh, an event like uh, particularly an Apple event because it takes a while for the uh, reality I, distortion well, field well, to wear not, off. Well, not it? only not only that, but like I I you know I, I a week and a half earlier I I cleared my schedule I canceled some stuff I committed like eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars of my travel budget to flying out here I've got to I I got to had to get up early to get an Uber to get to the to get to the theater <laughs> then I had to like stand outside for two and a half hours and then to be shuttled into a place to here's where you're supposed to go here's where you're allowed to go and then once I've been through I'm sitting there and I'm realizing that. What could I have done with twelve hundred dollars and four <laughs> days out of my work week? And, Disneyland, and, and if, exactly. And so it's it's if if I had had if I had been there and had to post something like at four p.m., I would have been a little bit more cranky. If I yeah. if, if I I I, 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 try, I try to monitor that very carefully. But I yes, was mad I had to get up at nine a.m. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, it was like I feel I feel I feel as though this was a two-hour commercial, and I don't need to be there to watch a two-hour. commercial. Commercial. You have to give me, give me data, give me reasons in which I can make conclusions. Excuse me, make form actual real opinions that I can inform the people who are nice enough to read my stuff and listen to my stuff. Uh, but don't just throw a commercial at me and expect me to say Apple's going to have a video service and a game service and a newspaper service. I like, can't, there, there's only been, as to my knowledge, one other time that Apple's announced something that won't be available for six months and that was the original or iphone more. because of uh the fcc approval process they announced it in january well, that, it came out in june yeah. but uh, uh, that's really unusual for apple to make well, a, such a big deal about yeah. something you can't get till the end of the year and and, and, al and also they didn't just say and we're making a phone now we can't show you the f we'll, right. we'll show you like an eight second clip of this phone but let's bring out some of the celebrities that we <laughs> that have been using this phone and have it's here's will i am pretending to use the phone that'll be out in six months yeah, it's, yeah, that's not again. It, it was a. It felt like a two-hour commercial. I'm glad that I stayed home for this. Not, not, not that, not that Apple presented me with the opportunity with to me. travel. 
which which would have been awesome. I would have I would have this is this is why like I've tra- I've kind of happily traded going to every Apple event to scheduling trips to San Francisco on my own accord when I can see people in Cupertino in Mountain View <laughs> and who like who are not like in the middle of like doing this huge <laughs> event. They can actually we can actually spend three or four hours hanging out and saying things that begin with the phrase. Now of course you can't share this with anybody. <laughs> I feel this like um, these events. Uh, this is a time fraught with peril for Apple because they are effectively deprecating hardware in favor of uh, services. They're still going to have to make the hardware. And really, the play is an ecosystem play, so it includes hardware and services. But that's what we saw today and, or yesterday. And so I'm, I feel bad for Lori because <laughs> Apple announcements in their heyday... When you got to see Steve Jobs, no one was sitting there thinking I could have spent that twelve hundred bucks better. Yeah. That was watching a master of the form changing the world in front of your eyes. This pales compared to that. So, Laurie, I think you're getting a different apple, unfortunately, and a different kind of <laughs> apple event. And, and part of the fun was with my super super long telephoto lens. They're showing the video, but my lens is pointed right in the wings where I can see Steve Jobs looking, and I'm watching his reactions. Is he getting yeah. notes from somebody, yeah. or as <laughs> as was normally, he's 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 got his arms crossed and he's just watching the video and smiling and smiling. And I guess that just shows that there are people in this world who care more about seeing Steve Jobs in the flesh than Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she she gives off this perfume that suddenly you <laughs> suddenly you're, you, you you realize that you have not been loved enough and you have not given enough love and you're inspired were you, to. Were you impressed, the rest Lori? You life. saw Christ. You saw Jennifer Aniston, J Jason so, Momoa. You saw Oprah Winfrey in a cape. Wasn't this that a, a thrill? Thing, there, this is a funny thing that I that I have told a couple people. I was more excited to see Camille Nanjiani on the stage than anybody else. I was the best of the bunch, though. I love He you. had presence. Everybody else looked like deers in a deer looking in the that's, headlight. That's very true. He was he owned that stage yeah. way better than anybody that's else. He's a stage and live I, stage performer, and the rest of them are actors. Big yeah, difference. Yeah, and so I was actually most excited to see Camille Nanjiani, believe it or not. <laughs> I was thrilled to see him, too, and he was funny. Yes. Now, there's one other story, that, and this is really kind of... In a nutshell, what's going on? Apple shipped new AirPods, or, or at least announced new AirPods and made them available for order. And uh, that was a press release compared yeah. to all the other stuff. Uh, somehow, Renee got his. I'm suspecting that they are on that blonde wood surface at an Apple event somewhere, but I might be wrong. I, I, I got mine too. Did you? So, yeah. so tell us. Good. Give us a little uh, capsule review. I know you just got them. I just got them, so uh, they. I just hooked them up uh, uh, to the phone, but you, there's a little light. Uh, you can't. That's the you charging be able light. To see it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little light on the front now. Because um, you can will. wireless charge them. Does it doesn't come with a wireless charger though? No. So you have to have. No, but you. It still. Has if you have your. If bottom. you have the air power, you're set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a wireless charger, so right. I, I will be trying that out as well. So, hey, are the headphones uh, different in any way? I mean, if you have Air AirPods already, is this worth running out and getting these? Uh, they look the same to me. I haven't had a chance to to sit down with my other and compare them, but um, on first glance, they look look pretty much the same. Yeah, I think in theory they're better, but I'm not sure how. Well, we'll wait till Renee and. Uh, Jim, give us their hearing test. I mean, you know, Jim is actually. I care more about what you think, Jim, because you're a headphone aficionado. <laughs> so you'll have you'll have something to say there, Jim. Um, they they didn't even change like the color of the tips so that everybody on the bus can tell that you've got yeah. the newer, more expensive. <laughs> how are you, how are you supposed to know? I have the better ones. Yeah, exactly. Put a red that ring yourself, on it. Andy, That's a little model paint and just just do go. the tip. Get your nail polish out, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think Renee. No, he didn't. He didn't comment in any way. He just did a little unboxing, and uh, and that's it. So the, yeah, the, I think he. I think he just got him. This is so, an Instagram yeah. unboxing, ladies and gentlemen. I, th I think yeah. he. I think he swiped him while everyone's attention was on Oprah. Because how can you take your eyes off of Oprah? In uh, a cape with a bolo tie, super Oprah. I did love, and I, I I started the show with this, but that big Vanity Fair style photo, and I realize now that that was in the Steve Jobs Theater. And was taken before the event. So that's how we know Jennifer Garner and a lot of other people were there that didn't end up on stage. Apple really brought out the celebrities for this, including 
the happiest little girl in the world. I don't know who she <laughs> is, but do you think she's excited? I think she's in, I think she's in. Uh, C which maybe one was the it? C I, with the Jason in the. That's what I was Alfred thinking. Woodard. I remember, yeah. I remember her in one of the video clips. I just don't yeah. remember which one. God, she's got to think. I'm sitting next to Camille and Johnny. No, I'm sitting, I'm sitting. I mean, that's pretty good. And of course, Oprah knows how to do these. She's been in a few Vanity Fair shots as, uh, as has. You're in the middle of laughing because you're enjoying, because you're living and loving life. Yeah. And Tim, Tim's yeah. trying to figure out what am I doing here? What's the new yeah. product? But there you and go. Lori, I, I don't want, I don't want to disappoint you further, but there in the olden days, this would have definitely been a very, very high quality poster sized print that everybody would have gotten uh, copy. There have been, there would have been just like a thick stack of them uh, and I would have taken three only because I want one and I know that the other one and the inner one will get crumbled up in the, in the open. <laughs> bin. Yeah. Now we know, by the way, where they have that big open space at the at, uh, top story of the yeah. Steve Jobs Theater. There's the elevator over there on the right. Mm -hmm. It's so they can do this. <laughs> As a sign of the bottom saying no riffraff. <laughs> this means you, Andy. And then I'm looking at it and I'm thinking... Because that's, uh, that's Camille and his wife, Emily V. Gordon, in the back there, standing on those pedestals. Did they have steps? Did they have to be helped up? How did they get up yeah, there? Yeah, how did they get up there? <laughs> Each is a block of yeah. aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm wondering also if they rotate, if like the pedestals rotate, because that would be really cool. Okay, I'm just saying. Like, oh, my God. We've, <laughs> they've just stealthily shown us the new Mac Pro unannounced. Oh, my God. There it is. They're huge. They should have put a little durable. Easter egg in there somewhere. <laughs> Would have been fun. I, hey, I was looking really, really closely at, like, what uh, – I, I noticed that Oprah was wearing an Apple Watch. I'm like, what band is she using? And is it oh. one that I've never seen? Is it one of the new spring bands, which they just it released? Looks, it looks purple. Like, it had a purpley sort of a glint to it, I think. I'm thinking Hermes, that, maybe? that maybe oh, Tim yeah. Cook proposed with that band and said, <laughs> Oprah, we'd like to get in bed with you. Um, yeah. He said, uh, didn't, didn't he like, he hugged her and said, oh, thank you. I'll remember this for the rest of my I life. I have to say, which, I don't see a lot of other Apple. when you hug Oprah because, you know. Where's JJ's Apple Watch? I don't see a lot of other, where's, uh, where's, uh, I don't see a lot of other Apple Watches out there. Let's uh, get some Apple Watches. For, what is Jennifer Garner wearing? Zoom in on her quick. Let's see. She's not wearing a wedding ring. Good news, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> she's also not she's wearing, wearing an Apple kind of watch. watch. Yeah, it ain't no Apple Watch. Mm. Everyone's wearing really muted tones. I think like they for, got the memo, all except Jason Momoa, yeah. who looks like Crocodile Dundee, but he is, after well, all, from New Zealand. What's that big chain? And what's on he's the other also, end? It ain't no Apple Watch. A big boat anchor. But he <laughs> swings above his head to get justice against the surface dwellers who are ruined. <laughs> you can almost see the gills, can't you? <sighs> Our show today brought... Get ready. Get your picks ready, because we're going to do that next. Our show today brought to you by Sophos. This is a name that is cherished by cybersecurity professionals. When uh, when uh, Russell set up our network here, first thing he does, put Sophos hardware in there to protect us all. Sophos cybersecurity. And uh, because Sophos is the one of the leaders in cybersecurity, they don't rest because the hackers don't rest. In fact, that cat and mouse game between security professionals and hackers is ramped up to a new level every, seems like every week sophos's latest play using ai deep learning to understand how malware works and hackers work and be prepared even though it may have never seen it before so that Sophos Security can interpret data and respond to threats at blazing speed even zero days now that is awesome Sophos recently ranked number one by an independent security test uh, done by the SE Labs. They had the best protection ratings across the board for large enterprises and small businesses. But now it's not just for business. And this is the really good news. Sophos has taken this amazing deep learning technology and made a premium version available for Macs and PCs. Sophos Home. And you're going to love how this works. Real-time protection from the latest ransomware attacks, malicious software, hacking attempts, and more. It's completely easy to use, whether you're just securing a laptop or managing the security of multiple devices, not just in your own home, but around the world. Because with one account, you could protect all the Macs and PCs in your home 
from a web-based console. And because it's cloud-based, you can use it to keep everybody secure, even relatives thousands of miles away. Remotely manage their security, clean up threats, keep their systems safe. This is what you need. Something that lives in the cloud is always up to date and you can manage remotely. I love this idea. Sophos says its tagline is security made simple. So, of course, it's incredibly easy to use. Protect Macs and PCs from a single console. You log in from your browser. You start securing your systems today. So now we use it in the enterprise. Big businesses use it. And now home users can be covered by Sophos. This is great news. Some of the largest businesses in the world use Sophos to stay protected from ransomware attacks. And, of course, the ones that didn't, well, you're reading about them in the paper today. Third-party reviewers consistently rank Sophos as among the best cybersecurity providers. And with that synchronized security, you can manage all your products from a single cloud-based console. Here's what you do. Go to Sophos.com and get a free trial today. But by the way, they also still do, and we recommend it all the time, the free security scan. I don't recommend antiviruses. I recommend Sophos. S-O-P-H-O-S.com. Sophos.com. Cybersecurity evolved. Try it today. Andy Anako, a pick of the week, my friend. Uh, we were talking about all these wonderful magazine services and game services and video services. Uh, it's a good time as any to remind everybody that your local library can also deliver a lot yes. of that same stuff. Uh, just download the RB Digital app. Uh, and if you have a modern uh, library card, still the one that you had in high school where they typed it out on a selectric typewriter, that's no good. Go, They'll, they'll give you one with a barcode and everything. Uh, but you just hook up your, your iOS app to your local library and you'd be amazed. Yes, yes you can get uh, all kinds of newsstand uh, magazines, but also all kinds of audiobooks. You can get ebooks. Uh, there are a lot of even uh, actual like streaming video channels you can get access to, uh, comic books also. Uh, and it's a lot of people just don't know that this is stuff that their community offers them just for free so uh you just download one app and you got it so uh i can i can't uh, in terms of how much you got to spend to what you get in return i don't think i will ever recommend something as good as the free electronic content you can get without even having to go to go to your library just through your phone uh through the rb digital app really great and it's not just rb digital you have to check with your library yep. to see what they support some have different uh, tools and so forth. All of them, it's weird, and I guess this is how their relationships with publishers work. You know, it's a digital content. You shouldn't have a due date, but you do because <laughs> it's a library. Right. But that's all right. It's free, right? And in most cases, there's plenty of time to listen or watch or read. Uh, I think they have a limited number of licenses. Yeah, for, I think it's something right. Digital a limited number of scenes, too. usually. Yeah. So yeah. best thing to do is check your library, see what apps they support. It might be Canopy, it might be RB, it might there a variety yeah. of different apps. Yeah. Um, Canopy uh, is, I think, what we use here in uh, Petaluma. But it is a really good reason to go get an, uh, your library card updated. Yeah, if if you haven't been to your local library recently or ever, this is as good an excuse as any to just go down there and see what the place is like. I've got my local library is just a mile walk away, and I just go there sometimes to hang out because it's just a beautiful space on a lake. And uh, and also getting, being able to find out what audiobooks I can get, what DVDs I can get, what digital stuff that I can just get on the get on the thing. Uh, there's a maker space that they're creating there, so you might be able to just simply say, "Hey, I I, I, I wish I, I don't have five thousand dollars for a laser cutter uh, to make this gadget that I saw re reference on the web, but if I just send come along with this PDF on a SD card, I can actually and if I buy this the material, they have a laser put, laser cutter and that can just simply make this thing uh, right in the basement of their own of my own library so definitely check it out mr rock and roll jim dalrymple i promised you i would have something new for you uh the next time i was on the show and it happens to be uh the very next week so i have a a new band that i want to recommend called altitudes and attitude mm. Now, this is a, 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 a like a super group, a mini super group with David Ellison from Megadeth, Frank Bello from Anthrax, and Jeff Friedel, who uh, Jeff played for uh, the Perfect or a Perfect Circle, uh, Pussiver, a, a lot of great uh, uh, hard rock and metal bands. This album, surprisingly 
is not as heavy as what people would think. So a lot of the things that I recommend and that people like on uh, MacBreak Weekly are more hard rock than they are metal. This album is one of those. But imagine putting together, um, yeah, there's there's some good sound there. I uh, love imagine it. Imagine putting together uh, those types of, of heavy metal people, but they're playing hard rock. It's really great music. I, I, I love it. You're such a sweet person, Jim. Is it because you get all your anger and aggression out in this music? It could be. This is good. This is melodic. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, great singing, um, great uh, melodic pieces, great choruses, and great playing. Obviously, these guys are very talented. Nice. Uh, so I, I, would, I would highly recommend it. I've, I've been loving listening to it myself. Altitude plus attitude. That kind of describes Jim Dalrymple in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> plus a beard. Now, I got to be careful because the last few times Lori's been on, I've bought everything she's mentioned. <laughs> I have an infinity scarf pillow for flying. I have the plug-in thing for my iPad. <laughs> what do you got well, for us this week? Maybe. I don't know. It depends on, on how comfortable you feel with having a pop socket. Oh, I'm not a pop socket. <laughs> First of all, doesn't that but impede wait, wireless so charging? Let me... Uh, no, actually, I have tested this. So, <gasps> so I could get a pop socket and charge wirelessly? Let me tell you what this is. This is called an Otter Pop or Otter Plus Pop, depending on, on whether or not they're worried about getting in trouble for the naming <laughs> it. But it's Otter Plus Pop. I call it Otter Pop because it's adorable to call it that. And it's a symmetry case made by Otter Pop. They also have the Defender series. Um, I think the Defender series is um, also for Galaxy S10. I love um, I, Otter boxes. They really protect your yeah. Your so device. it's just it's your standard symmetry auto Otter Otter box, and then they teamed up with PopSocket to put this right there in the background. Oh it's, my god! And it's divoted. It's divoted in. This is my so favorite it's flat. part. Because I've got you know I have a pop socket right here. I I. I love them. They're funny. I think they're great. But I can't stick them in my back pocket because they stick out too far. Right. So when it's closed, <gasps> it still sticks out a tiny, tiny bit. But look how slim that Much is. It, it's smoothly fits into my back pocket. You can also remove them. Let's see if I can do this without um, messing it up. Um, you can replace them. And so you can get like, um, I think they call them pop tops. And uh, no, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it without possibly accidentally ruining it. Oh, wait, here we go. Yeah, there we go. I took off the back. Oh, my and God. Then, yeah. So then you can replace that with any other um, pop top. Can I get um, a sick yeah, burn so pop top? <laughs> if we make some sick burn uh, pop, uh, pop sockets, yes. <laughs> I want a sick burn pop socket. Do you really? <laughs> Do you really have sick burn pop sockets? No, no. I said it, if we were to make them. You should make them. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I don't, think, I don't think, you know, actually, one inch buttons are super popular for punk rockers. Uh -huh. Maybe we need to move on and get some pop sockets out there. That, like, maybe that's the next step. <laughs> you, you should get your street team right on this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah where's your street team? Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's a good pick. So, yeah. I love that. So, the Otter Pop, if, uh, if anybody's if, if been waiting for this, it is finally available. They announced it at CES, but it wasn't available until yesterday. Very so. nice. You did it again, Laurie Gill. I wish I had one of them Apple credit cards to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Laurie Gill is a managing editor at imore.com, now part of the future family. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Does that mean you get free rides to England? Uh, no, but I if if I if I had known that we were um, acquired by Free Future before I went to my trip to London, which I found out two weeks later. Oh I man, think. you could have gone to see the new people. <laughs> I could have visited them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, anyway, thank you, Lori. We love having you on. Thank you. Thanks for having love me. Love the I curly really hair. It. That's cute. Yeah, I like that. Keep, my new look. Keep the curls. This is my good. Joan Jet do actually. It's really awesome. <laughs> I've always been a Bang fan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love it. Yeah. Yep. At Appleholic <laughs> on the Twitter, Andy Anako, WGBH Boston. You can hear him uh, usually Fridays, right? 
Yep, I'm on Friday, uh, this Friday at 12.30. Actually, we're doing it live on the, at the studio at the Boston Public Library. So if you want to come in and see what I look like when I'm desperately trying to look like I'm not reading from my notes, uh, come on in at 12.30. There's a coffee shop right there. Get Grab yourself a cookie and a chair. Nice. Anatco.com, I-H-N-A-T-K-O, and of course, at Anatco. Lori's, by the way, at Appaholic, A-P-P-A-H-O-L-I-K on the Twitter. And Mr. Dalrymple, you find him at loopinsight.com, at J Dalrymple on the Twitter. The beard, does it have its own account? I uh, There's several out there somewhere that <laughs> other people do. You don't need and, to. And I don't have a Joan Jett haircut, so... <laughs> 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 you have a, um, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to have a good one to come up with. I know, I, I was thinking too. Yeah, 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 shaved their head. <laughs> anyway, great to have you, Jim. As always, we love getting this team together. It's a lot of fun. I'm sure Renee will be back next week, but Laurie and Jim, you should come by anytime. We love having you. I appreciate it. Of course, it, Andy's here every week. I think we should bring week. our guitars. If we, ha if we both come by, we should bring our guitars. Andy, what instrument do you play? I have my uke. I, actually, I just unpacked my Yamaha keyboard like a few weeks ago. Every, every, band, which are the every band should have two ukuleles, so I'll play the uke too. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be rhythm uke. I, I'm not, I, I need some, I need some I'm time to be lead uke. uke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. You can listen or watch live at twit.tv slash live. We've got a variety of streams there for you to choose from. You can watch live by being in the studio. If you're going to be in Petaluma, Northern California area, just email tickets at twit.tv. We'd love to have you in here. And, of course, you got to be in the chat room if you're watching live, and that's irc.twit.tv. After the fact, all our shows are available on demand at the website, twit.tv, in this case, twit.tv slash mbw. But we like it best... Mama likes it best if you subscribe in your favorite podcast application. That way, you'll get Mac Break Weekly the minute it's available. Now, I'm sad to say it's time to say goodnight because it's time to get back to work. Break time is over. Bye-bye.